All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, we're going to kill a few minutes while we wait for the last couple of people to trickle in. Um, thank you. But we'll we'll have something to for y'all to look at. Let's see. We'll wait just uh, just a minute or two. So hello and greetings and thank you for joining us. Um, sorry if uh, I'd like to apologize if uh, the rescheduling affected anyone uh, who's here today. We should have a decent webinar ready for you. <clears throat> All right, I think that's about long enough. Um, all righty, greetings, everyone. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join us uh, for this webinar today. And again, I'd like to apologize to anyone that was affected by our unfortunate rescheduling. My name is Christopher Gardner, and I'm the lead developer for Visual Assist. Uh, Visual Assist is a productivity plugin for Visual Studio. And we're going to talk about one of our major features today, and that's code inspections. So today we'll talk about how to use code inspections to eliminate code smells automatically. Uh, so let's go over the topics in a little bit more detail. Um, so first I'd like to give an introduction to the Visual Assist plugin as a whole uh, to give a sense of where uh, this feature fits in, the, where code inspections fits into the family of code inspections features. So if you've never heard about Visual Assist, we'll talk about that. Then I'd like to give a quick look at our code inspections feature uh, that's the main topic of today's webinar. I'll go over some common coding issues that Code Inspection is designed to tackle, and then uh, I'll give you a visual walkthrough. So once we're nearly wrapped up, I'll switch over to Visual Studio, and we can actually finish with the demo. And if you have any questions, uh, please ask them uh, in the chat, because at the very end, we'll have an opportunity for uh, answering questions. And we, of course, love questions, so feel free to send them in. All right, so uh, Visual Assist. Um, code Inspections is a feature of Visual Assist, which of course itself is a plugin for Visual Studio 2022. Uh, and we support all the way back to Visual Studio 20, uh, 2005. Uh, Visual Assist is productivity focused, which means essentially our features tend to save you time. And we've gotten around to adding a lot of features over the years. <laughs> we mainly focus on C++, um, and C++ is just where we see the greatest need for filling the gaps, which is our tagline at the moment. Uh, but we also support C Sharp uh, in a pretty first class way. So basically anything that works in C++ is also gonna work in C Sharp. So uh, either language, if you use them, uh, we support that pretty well. And for those of us who, uh, for those of us who'd never used uh, Visual Studio before, uh, generally we offer several IntelliSense-like features for navigation, refactoring, uh, debugging, to name just a few categories. Uh, in many ways, we have a superset of the built-in tooling, and some users, uh, for example, choose to disable IntelliSense uh, and only use Visual Assist. But of course, we do work very well alongside IntelliSense um, as well. Just giving you an idea of the, the kind of features that we offer without getting too into detail. <clears throat> And the reason users can disable the built-in tooling uh, if they choose to is because we have our own code parser. And our own code parser is built in-house. Uh, and our parser offers high performance and memory efficiency uh, when reading and editing C++ and C Sharp code, which is really critical to working uh, particularly in large solutions, such as Unreal Engine games. And it's a major reason developers choose Visual Assist, certainly. Um, but there is one star feature that our parser doesn't drive, actually, and that's going to be code inspections. Uh, and I say star feature, but frankly, I fear that code inspections uh, has a criminal underutilization as code inspection is disabled by default. So that's one of the reasons that we'll be going over this today is to try to convince more people to try it. Uh, code inspections is driven um, off of a different technology. We'll talk a little bit more about what actually does drive code inspections in a little bit. But first, let's take a uh, first look. So if you haven't seen code inspections at all before, this is some of the UI that you can be expected to see. And I'd like to point out three things in this image. So first, there's going to be a blue underline uh, below a few of the symbols. And these are reflected uh, 
in the blue dashes on the scroll bar to the right. This is code inspection telling us that it's essentially found an issue in the file that we're working in. Uh, there's also a drop down menu, and the drop down menu offers a suggested fix, which you can uh, select to apply the fix. And there's also a tool window off to the right. So we'll talk a little bit more about this um, as we go. But I just wanted to show you what you'll see uh, and the basics of what we're going to be going over. And I call uh, code inspections one of our star features because, frankly, it, it's one of my favorite features. So. <laughs> So the common coding issues that code inspections is intended to help with. So because it because code inspection fixes common coding issues, you've been coding in C++ for a while, for example, you've probably been guilty of not using the latest standards. For shame, of course. <laughs> but luckily code inspections can help us out. And really I'm not, I'm I'm mostly joking. New C++ standards come out every few years. So I really think something like this alone makes this tool valuable to to quite a few users. Uh, but of course we aim to do more than that. We aim to catch common performance strains and potentially buggy mistakes, such as the stud string constructor uh, call below. You might not, you know, a lot of things can be tricky to just tell, uh, okay, this is wrong or slow or bad. This is wrong. This is just straight up wrong. The, they're swapped. Um, and we aim to catch common form analysis strains, right? Uh, not everyone would see immediately the parameters are swapped. It still compiles. Uh, in fact, that's the focus of code inspections, code issues that the compiler uh, won't catch. So, so something that something that you know is a potential issue or uh, an issue with um, modernization, not so much something that's just an obvious compiler error that you'll catch regardless. <clears throat> so we don't use a lot of UI in Visual Assist. That's certainly by design, and Code Inspections follows this minimal UI principle. Uh, the blue underlines are easier on the eyes, for example, than red squiggles. It's really easy to disable specific uh, code inspections if you aren't interested in them and some low-level inspections uh, don't even display an underline. So for example, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about levels, but the, the, the idea is we really don't want there to be any noise, any visual noise or noise in any other way to distract the coder. We want, when we, when we underline something in blue, we want there to be something, uh, we want it to be something relevant, important. So for each underline, we offer a suggested fix. And you can apply the fix and your code is refactored for you. So that's a really interesting and important feature. So for example, here's before and after again, um, and you can really trust our automatic rewrites. We do a lot of testing and fix tweaking to ensure that we don't break your code or make anything worse. Uh, this will certainly come in handy as we'll see when we go to the tool window uh, to apply many fixes at once. And once a fix is applied, uh, you actually might find that there's uh, another fix possible. So uh, you might find the blue underline stays. In this case, another fix uh, could be applied at the same section of code. So the idea here is we intelligently avoid kind of overburdening you with so many fixes. If the same section of code needs multiple fixes, we'll essentially display the most important one first uh, so that we don't just have underlines all over uh, willy-nilly. <laughs> It's a basic idea. And you can access code inspections by hovering over the underlying symbol. So right here, so just hover your mouse over it. You can click the tomato icon. You can also use Shift-Alt-Q, so move your um, typing caret or cursor into the symbol or where the blue underline is and use Shift-Alt-Q, which is frankly the most important keyboard shortcut in all of Visual Assist. Um, and you'll get the same, you'll get the same result. So besides accessing us from the editor here, you can also access us from the tool window. So if you display the tool window, which I certainly recommend you do, you'll get a concise summary of all the potential fixes uh, in the document you're working on. Uh, this this will allow you to easily apply several fixes at once, which is really nice. Um, and since the refactors won't break code, uh, applying in bulk is something that's possible and makes sense to do, <laughs> right? Because if these fixes were were shaky in any way, you, you really wouldn't ever want to apply them in bulk because you'd be breaking code and you'd have to review absolutely every line you changed. So what's the point of doing it in bulk anyway? So that's really important for us. <clears throat> what, 40 inspections. So we currently have 40 code inspections and we're adding more very frequently, just about every release. Um, 
The full list is in our documentation and you can browse through them in the options dialog as well, which we'll, I'll show a little bit uh, about when we actually do the demo. So as far as the engine, so I said our parser doesn't actually power code inspections. Instead, we base code inspections on the custom build, uh, on a custom build of Clang. And Clang has this cute dragon, so I decided to include it. Uh, whereas the Visual Assist parser is mostly concerned with speed and performance, uh, and for editing, parsing code for editing, Clang has a much deeper language understanding, which allows us to confidently apply the complex refactory necessary uh, for code inspections to work. Uh, particularly in bulk. So Clang has definitely been an important uh, engine that has helped us drive uh, code inspections. And it's very configurable. So each checker can be individually configured uh, as far as the checker level, whether or not it's enabled, and any detailed configuration for the check logic itself uh, is available in the options dialog. Uh, but you actually don't need to go into the options dialog if you just want to do simple things like disabling checkers, um, and things like that. You can actually use the tool window. Um, so this is mostly for, for really digging in. And besides the disabling checkers in the tool window and such and the options dialog, you can actually disable checkers only for specific sections of code or you know particular documents or such. And this is this all the, the, whole, the point of all of that is to come together and reduce noise. So we want everything to be relevant and only important UI to be on your screen. Um, so this is, if you need granular configurability, we have that as well. So there's really a lot to this feature. Um, and because there's a lot to this feature, I do recommend you try it out. So <laughs> we're all pretty much experts in code inspection now. There really isn't a lot to the feature, uh, in a sense. Just the basics of how it's used, you just turn it on and you can look at your code and you'll see the blue underlines and you can take action but I'd like to give you a demo to show you what it looks like in practice. And if you'd like to follow along, you can download Visual Assist from our website, holtomato.com for free. If you haven't tried us before, you get a 30-day trial. And if you have tried us before, you'll get seven-day trial uh, to try any new build. So whenever a new build comes out, you can get another seven days, even if you've tried it before. So you can probably still check this out as well. And once you get everything set up, um, or if you already have Visual Assist and you're just watching this webinar uh, just to learn more about Visual Assist, you'll need to enable code inspection. It's in the options dialog under Visual Assist X uh, code inspection. The VA code inspection results tool window is also in that menu. And I suggest you show that as well. So this will this is how you get started because like I said code inspections as nice and awesome as it is is currently disabled by default which is frankly something I should fix <laughs> it hasn't been beta for a while uh, so I suggest you, you you enable it and see what it's in and just actually give it a shot uh, check out the code inspection results all right so now we've uh, we've managed to reach all the way to the demo so this isn't going to be a very long webinar um, I'd, I'd interested in your questions I'm interested in uh, you know, y'all trying it out and uh, such. So if you just want to give it an install, start up code inspections, maybe open up the tool window and follow along. So here we are uh, in Visual Assist. So here, let me let me uh, go through and show again how to enable code inspections. So it's right here. Uh, if you're using Visual Studio, uh, you know, 2019, 2022, we'll be in the extensions, the extensions menu, Visual Assist X, code inspections, it says beta, but we frankly aren't beta anymore. <laughs> Uh, go ahead, enable it, and uh, show the results window. Now, depending on your code, uh, it, you may not see a lot of uh, actual fixes here. You may not see a lot of fixes here. But uh, but a simple way to test, for example, just if you're, if you're like, okay, is code inspections on at all? Um, well, one thing you can do is just say, like, int pointer my int uh, equals null. One of, the, one of the things that we certainly like to do is to recommend you use <laughs> null pointer. So anytime, you could just put null somewhere and we'll get mad about it. And that's how you can tell uh, that this feature is definitely enabled. It's very easy to do that. Okay, so let's go through some examples. Uh, for example, so here's us using, uh, creating a, calling the constructor of shared pointer, the base class, but of course we can use make shared. And if I, if I hover and click, we'll see that it's uh, code inspections is suggesting that we use make shared uh, and if I click this, it'll actually read it for me. That's a pretty simple one, but it is nice. 
Uh, and if you haven't used raw string literals, they certainly are very, very nice. They're so nice that we actually added a feature to uh, suggest you use them. <laughs> so now you can actually, for once uh, in your C++ life, see single slashes used <laughs> instead of double. And it does simplify code. So simplifying code is an important thing that Code Inspections does as well. Even though this isn't technically more correct, it's more readable. And that's really important to us as well. Whenever we can use modern code, uh, you know, sensibilities to extend the readability of, of this complex C++ monstrosities that we're building on a daily basis. It's really helpful. So for example, I'll type def to using, there you go. Right away, simple. Uh, if you're, a lot of people do this. And of course in C++, zero is false and everything else is true. So you can get pretty wacky with the true and the false, but it's not readable, right? So in the cases where it really, it, you really are converting these really are going to convert to true and false, and we're sure of it. Thanks to the Clang parser, we parse deeply enough to be absolutely certain that this is what you mean. Uh, we'll, we'll suggest that. We'll suggest you use actually true and false, because that stuff is pretty hard to read. Um, just an example. Of course, you can disable all this, and I'll show you a little bit more about how to configure that. So if you don't actually like the stuff that we're, we're, we're showing, or you want to see different code inspections uh, available, you could jump into our options dialog. I did show you this before, but you can, for example, like you don't want to see the make shared uh, suggestion, or if you want to decrease it to a less important underline, or you want to make it more important, or configuring it, uh, configuring the settings, we can do all that through the options dialog. We can also uh, disable code issues right from uh, the code inspection results. So if you if you just don't want to see something, it's not something that's important to you. Again, very easy to do. Uh, you just right click. You can also group things by the code issues uh, or level. Most of these are going to be the same level, but there's some less important ones. So I did mention before that code issues that uh, aren't that critical really uh, don't actually get the blue underline because we only like uh, like I've said before, we really want things to be as uh, uncluttered in the UI as possible. So actually, uh, a lot of these features, a lot of a lot of these fixes, if they're very simple fixes, we won't even show like these redundant voids that don't do anything. We won't even show uh, any UI really. It'll just be a little slightly darkened. You can apply through here. So it's worth talking about uh, how to apply fixes uh, through this dialog. So what you can do is you can actually just select any number of fixes uh, and apply. Um, I think I just applied everything, but that gives you an idea of, of the power of it. Certainly, I'm going to undo that. Um, the whole, the reason that we put so much effort into each individual check, and to ensure that uh, that even some complex rewrites, like for example, um, here's a for loop that we need to convert. Um, here's another for loop, and we can easily convert that. Uh, so we try to be very, very, uh, very, very careful about how we do these refactorings. And the whole reason we do that is so that you can apply by group, you can apply by selected, or you can just apply everything. So you can apply everything to the entire file you're checking in and then maybe apply it again, just because now it's gonna uncover some additional fixes uh, like I was talking about with the layers. And you can modernize quite a bit of code very quickly and improve the readability like that. And again, you can be confident that we're not going to break anything because of the way that we've written the written the code uh, for the tool. Um, yeah. All right, uh, that is that is a very quick and basic rundown. So again, install Visual Assist. You'll have to enable it. It's not enabled by default. I suggest you enable the code inspections window because it's not going to be shown by default. And then you've got all this ability, just run through your files and your code and see what we see what we offer. You might be surprised at how much we can improve for you, even in just this early phase where we only have 40 checkers. We have quite a few more planned in the future. Um, quite a bit more functionality in general. So just getting people uh, engaged in this would be, it'd be very important. And soon, oh, that's definitely not gonna build. Uh, and soon we're going to be, um, yeah, you know, so we're we're going we're going to work on this code inspections more. We're, this is something that we think is is very critical and important to us going forward. We're going to be adding a lot more to this, uh, so I, I think that it's worth uh, with worth watching closely and using 
uh, using now, certainly. All righty, uh, there's a very basic demo. I think I covered everything I'd like to I'd like to mention. Options dialog, how to enable us, how to go through here. So these are the levels. It's how it's going to be. So the levels affect how they are displayed, both in the code inspection results window, how the what what color the underline looks like. Like for example, something that's five doesn't even have an underline. Uh, it's just slightly grayed and italicized. So. All right, that was our our little our my little walkthrough demo. Again, this was going to be a a quick, uh, a pretty quick um, webinar. We didn't I didn't want to spend too much time. It's just one feature. This is still a lot of time to talk about one feature from a single product in a way that doesn't you know waste time. So hopefully we we might have some questions. So if you have any questions uh, that you'd like to ask me while we're here. This is certainly an opportunity. Um, you know, ask the lead developer, Visual Assist, anything you'd like. Uh, type them into chat, and we'll see if we can't get those answered. Okay, so let's see. Questions, pain. So, okay, I, we'll, we'll go through some of these. Uh, so why do we call it beta? Yeah, okay, so the real truth behind why we call it beta, and you're hearing it from me, um, is because we actually intended to completely, is because we intended so much more for this feature and we're actually working on so much more behind the scenes that we were worried once we released these big updates, it would re-enter beta. But that's not really a problem. We've actually been testing a lot of the new improvements. We, we, we've got a really excellent testing methodology and we use the product in-house uh, constantly before we release it to users. So we're pretty happy with how it happened, with 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 our um, with whether or not it's beta. So so we'll remove the beta. It's not beta. Don't worry about the beta. Um, hey, we're going to take it off. It's it's beta simply because we were worried that we would re-enter beta. It's actually rather mature here. Um, okay, so this is important to understand. Even though almost all of our features work in both C and C sharp, code inspections actually is a C only feature. So Visual Studio built in does a pretty decent job of um, essentially doing code inspections for C Sharp. Uh, and we're, we're kind of taking some of that and bringing it to C++. So if you use C Sharp exclusively, then code inspections uh, won't make a big uh, difference for you, unfortunately. Uh, not at the time. Uh, we don't have any support uh, for C++ Builder at this time. We only support Visual Studio. Uh, again, um, we, I don't think we have any public plans of supporting C++ Builder at this time. Only C++, only Visual Studio. Uh, we don't support any other IDEs at the moment. Alrighty, so if no one else has any other questions, I'd like to thank you. Um, and we can uh, end the webinar. So there's a little track again. Thank you for joining. Uh, I've had an excellent uh, time giving this uh, short introduction to code inspections. Again, apologies for the reschedule. Uh, thank you for your questions. And if there's nothing else, uh, Martha, I think that we can say goodbye. <laughs>